ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 235 of the podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. Yeah, I missed a month of episodes. Fuck you. How much do you pay for it? Nothing. It's free. And there's no refunds, even if you did pay for it. Shout out to all my Patreon supporters, which, by the way, uh, look, are dwindling. I lost one, lost one of you good soldiers. I uh, I appreciate all the support that comes my way, uh, but I but I I don't appreciate people abandoning ship. You know, I was pumping out enough content. It's not just for the podcast. I understand a lot of you guys are here for that reason, but you know, come on, stick with me. I was doing shows. I'm working on content. Keelan's exporting footage right now hurry up they're waiting i'm losing patreon supporters you know why i lost you know why i'm angry about that one guy that left and look if your financial situation changes absolutely whatever you know you're more important than me absolutely the reason i lost a patreon supporter in a way that pissed me off so much that i had to start off this episode by the way i'm not bitching all right i'm okay i got a new jacket i'm on jacket money i'm fine i'm not starving to death patreon pays for keelan you know, worry about him, guys. Don't worry about me. Because he's, he's, he's close to the edge, you know? He's, he spent $200 on VHS tapes. He's lost it. The cunt collects VHS tapes. What do you have to say for yourself? Back to work. He doesn't have anything else to say because he has to be busy working. He bought 200 VHS tapes. Wait, how much was it? It was 300 and it was 60 bucks. 300 tapes for 60 bucks. Bro, you can turn in your house into a fucking blockbuster. And by house, I mean one bedroom in Frankston. <laughs> Apartment, all right? With fucking, you know, surrounded by racist and, and domestic violence. That's Frankston in the one bedroom blockbuster. I think blockbuster should come back to Frankston. I reckon it would be the only suburb where it would work. Because cunts would rock in so high off their head on ice that they would think that it's like 1982. They'd be like, fuck. It's so I thought it had been decades. It's only been a couple of days. Do you guys have Die Hard? It's a Christmas film. Uh, just because you like ice and snow doesn't mean it's a fucking Christmas film. Anyway, I lost a Patreon supporter, guys, and I'm really shitty about it. If I lose one because your financial situation changes or you get sick of my voice, that's fine. Acceptable. Thanks for doing business. Thanks for helping me out. On your way. All right. I mean, you're going to miss out on, on, the, on the incredible experience of being in the, the, the Lewis Spears Discord server where, where I had to, had to tell someone, hey, man, don't post furry porn in here. I will ban you. You know, you're missing out on that, that experience. But, you know, I understand. And I'm grateful for your support. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm, you know, best of luck to us both. You know, you helped me out when you could. And then, and then you either, your situation changed or you just got sick of me. We've all been there. Sometimes I get sick of me. And I go, you know what? I'm not going to do the podcast for a month. I understand. But one guy DM'd me after my fucking festival run. Now, I did 23 shows. I sold a lot of tickets. Daddy's allowed to get himself something nice. And I didn't go crazy. I bought myself some fucking AirPods. I'm allowed to have AirPods, bro. It's borderline a work expense. I need headphones for what I do. I'm always on the, on watching shit. I'm always editing. I need them in my pocket because I fucking, I got Beats and I broke them. And I'm like, you know what? I downgraded from Beats. I could have bought the fucking Beats again, but Dr. Dre can suck my ass because his Beats break. I've had two pairs of those fucking headphones and they always break. So Dr. Dre, suck my ass. Get a real degree, cunt. And learn how to make some fucking headphones. I got some AirPods, which, by the way, for a tool needed for my work, not that expensive. Expensive if you want some wireless headphones. For someone who, who needs them for work, for a work tool, that's not that expensive, all right? All these tradies out there probably spent 1500 on a fucking nail gun, and if you didn't, say goodbye to your thumbs. All right, don't write, oh, my one only costs 400 All right, fingerless Joe, you're going to be putting that fucking nail gun through your thumb. I've seen it. 
Get a good one, you fucking moron. Oh, I, I had one guy, I did this rant about how I needed a good laptop because it's a work expense. I need a good tool for my job. I had some kind go, oh, I'm a tradie and I got my nail gun secondhand. Yeah, well, guess where you're, where, where the next nail's going? Your eyes, bro. You're going to be that, that work safe ad. You know, you're going to take off your fucking safety glasses. You'll fire the gun. It'll shoot straight into your eyeball, into your brain. Might make you smarter, cunt. Get a first-hand nail gun, you idiot. <laughs> anyway, now that I've thoroughly trashed the working class, it's time to talk about how I deserve AirPods. <laughs> I bought AirPods because I fucking need them, all right? Fuck you. I don't need to give you a reason why I bought AirPods because I wanted them and I could afford them. So that's why, all right? Suck my dick. I'm 27. I can buy AirPods without an excuse. I bought AirPods, right? Which is enough to make me angry. Oh, cunt. I didn't hit record. I hit record on that. Oh, you did. Oh, thank fuck. Oh, my God. Maybe I don't deserve AirPods. Jesus Christ. Thank fuck Keelan's here. Yelling for six minutes about how I need AirPods for my work. You know what I need for my work? A brain that functions. Maybe I am that tradie that I'm yelling about. There's a nail in my brain I haven't noticed yet. Probably in Blockbuster in 2020, thinking it's 1980. Fuck. I almost lost it then. I got... Now, now I'm... You know when you get angry for no reason? I'm like, I don't know where, where to direct this anger. Now I just feel silly. I got really mad and now I'm just here. I'm like, hmm, now I just have to sit with it and enjoy it. You know that when you stub your toe? You fucking... Mm, it was my fault. I should be more careful. Fuck. You know when you do that? When you just stub your toe and you're like, oh, I want to kill someone, but I can't because I did it. And I can't get angry at a wall because it has no sentience. You know, that's, that's where you really find out who you are, you know? When you stub your toe in the dark and you get that flush of rage, you know, and you find out, am I a guy who can de-escalate the situation with their own self? Or am I the guy who's going to need a plasterer tomorrow morning because I put my fist through the fucking wall, you know? <laughs> you find out a lot about yourself in those moments when you stub your toe on the wall and you're like, am I, am I, am I a person who can breathe and calm down? <sighs> Or am I a guy who's going to be applying band-aids to their knuckles and calling a plasterer because I put my fist through the fucking wall, you know? And and in Keelan's case, he puts his fist through the one-bedroom apartment in Frankston who'll probably punch the woman next door and she would have thought, I thought my husband was out. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Never had that one happen before. I thought he was at work playing with his second-hand nail gun. Anyway, I bought AirPods and fuck you, that's why. I bought some fucking AirPods and I'm allowed to. They're 200 bucks. That's expensive for wireless headphones. But hey, I'm an Apple boy. I'm not going to get... What am I going to do? Get... what? what is, what's who's Ray J's fucking wireless head... What are they called? Raycons? I'm not going to get Raycons unless they sponsor me, in which case I highly recommend them and they're great quality or whatever the fuck. Look, I think that you should fuck what they sound like. I reckon you should buy Raycons just because we all watch Kim Kardashian get plowed by him, you know? I think that's reparations for Ray J. Like, that's kind of giving back. That was the first porno I ever saw in my life. I feel like I should buy Raycons to say thanks. Thanks, Ray J. I appreciate you. Anyway, I bought AirPods, right? And I and I took a photo of them, like a, a, a funny photo. Can't wait to lose these because I we all know that's what's going to happen. I've seen it happen before. My girls had AirPods. She lost them. Keelan's had AirPods. He lost them. A guy I know has AirPods. He lost them. That's what happens. That's 50% of uh, Apple's revenue model is just selling you shit you know you're going to lose. I think that they should really recall those uh, tracker things. You watch. When they fucking... When you get those little tr air tracks or whatever the fuck they are, those are little microchip things that help you find lost things. I think that, that, that Apple's share price is going to tank because no one's going to be replacing their AirPods anymore. You know, think about how much, you know, actually those tracker things wouldn't fit on an AirPod case. And I think they did that by design because if there was an, a tracker thing in your AirPod device, that would be like 50% of Apple's revenue down the toilet. So anyway, I bought Apple AirPods. Welcome back to the podcast, guys. I started this fucking story 20 minutes ago, and now we're here. I'm about to tell it. Maybe unless I get sidetracked, which I might. 
which I'm frequently prone to do. I'm getting sidetracked right now talking about being sidetracked. Welcome to the show. Support me on Patreon now. Um, I get a message from this guy, right? And he goes, hey, man, I've supported you for a really long time on Patreon. I really like your content, uh, but... Uh, after seeing you have AirPods, you obviously have way more money than me. I just can't continue to support you. I hope you understand. And, and I would like to say to that guy, I don't understand that at all, actually. I don't fucking... Since when were AirPods a sign of wealth? When they came out, obviously. But just because I have AirPods doesn't mean I don't need you six bucks a month. That goes in Keelan's pocket. Now I have to dock his pay. Sorry, man. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought it was a funny reason to, to, to not support me. And you know what? That's not what I want to see. I don't want to see people stopping supporting me because I, it looks like I'm doing well. No, that's not on. What is this? World Vision? Am I a fucking world? Do you, would you do that to a World Vision kid? You sponsor a kid and then they send you a photo of him in school and you go, oh, he's doing well. Fuck him. No, he's gone back to the fucking well. If you did that, that's the point of the updates. You should be proud of me. You should go, wow, I helped buy those AirPods for Lewis. He's going to use them to create really good content now. That You know what, bro? The only reason I recorded this episode is because I bought AirPods. So fuck you. <laughs> Would you do that to your sponsor, your sponsor child? Would you? You sponsor a child and then he sends you a postcard. Oh, thank you so much for the money. I had my first day at school and you go, oh, he's in school. Fuck him. I want a refund. You send him straight back to the gulag. Would you do that? Huh? What about you donate to the fucking, the, you donate to the cancer council and they take some little bald nine-year-old out for dinner and you go, oh, he gets dinner now, does he? Well, I'm never donating to the cancer council again. I thought I was helping sick kids. But you're, now you've got enough money to take him out to dinner? Well, fuck those kids. I hope they never cure it. <laughs> is, that what, is that what you would do? You would only help someone at their bare minimum need? Why don't you go give a blowjob to a homeless guy? Then you'd probably find out halfway through that he's, he's had sex before. Oh, sorry, I only help the homeless men who are virgins. <laughs> you spit his cum back in his dick. <laughs> Blow it back in like a flute. <laughs> 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 Put that cum back in your balls. I thought I was sucking off a destitute homeless person, not someone with a bank account. <laughs> Fill it back up. That's disgusting. That's probably the most disgusting thing I've ever thought of is, what is that, a reverse blowjob? No, a, a truly reverse blowjob would be, would, be, would be getting someone else's cum and putting it in, in a stranger's penis, you know? you got to show up with the cum. And put it back in. That's disgusting. That's even worse than what I thought of. Yuck. Now I feel sick. Maybe I shouldn't have recorded this. <laughs> Maybe he's right. Guys, the point is, I want to see at least two new patrons by the end of this episode. Because, because I think we should all be excited when I spend more money on Apple products. I'm sick of this negativity. Oh, Apple's overpriced. Yes. Oh, there are lots of Windows products that could do a better job than an Apple computer. Yes. Oh, Android phones are better. Kill yourself. All right. That's wrong. That's unequivocally wrong. The best Android phone can't compete with the best iPhone. And you know why? Take a selfie. That's why, dickhead. Post an Instagram, so post an Instagram story, bro. You look like Minecraft Steve. All right. You look like Minecraft Steve. Don't tell me how many megapixels are in your camera. Post an Instagram story. You care about photo quality and megapixels. Hey, get a DSLR and then eat my cum. Anyway, guys, it's good to be back. I'm happy to be back. I'm sorry that I did miss so many episodes. I was very busy doing the comedy festival, if, which, by the way, if you did attend, thank you very much. I appreciate it. It was uh, probably the best run of shows I've ever had, man. Really, really, really fun. And how Melbourne is this? This this really shows that that comedy. This this would never happen in Perth. This would never happen in Brisbane. This would probably wouldn't even happen in Adelaide, right? Absolutely would not happen in Tasmania. This is some purely Melbourne shit. I think uh, 
uh, it was uh, three times. Yeah, exactly three times. I misgendered someone three times. Not the same person. That would be a hate crime. Uh, th- three different people. That's the most Melbourne shit ever. Uh, I, I accident and uh, not on purpose, by the way. I'm not some fucking bigot. You can be whoever you want to be at my shows. You just may get called the wrong gender because all I can see is your outline. Because that's probably the, a trans woman's biggest obstacle, isn't it? Their outline. You know, like you can put on a full face of makeup, you can get some good titties, but that outline is a brutal one to overcome. You ever see a, a trans woman from behind and, and, and walking towards the sun while it's setting? It's very difficult to tell. That out, those broad shoulders are, are a big obstacle to overcome. And God bless these ladies, you know, because it's, it's hard to be defeated by your out. It's hard to defeat your outline. You know, fat guys, they have a lot to compete with when it comes to the outline, you know? Like if you're trying to lose weight and then one day you just catch your shadow and you see your outline, you're like, oh, fuck, that's rough. You know, I imagine that trans women have to deal the same. You know, they're, war- they're, they're having a great day. They feel really good. Maybe someone asked them for their number. They're feeling really confident. They feel real beautiful. They feel real feminine. And then one day they're crossing the street and then the sun's up. Maybe it's, you know, 3 p.m. And then they just see their shadow in front of them. Uh, and, and they just see a linebacker. It's very difficult to overcome that outline, you know? Uh, and and that's that's something that I had to contend with. There was a, there was a woman... Uh, who who was uh, at my show, and I may release this clip because they were fine with it, and I think it was funny, or it may get me cancelled forever. Uh, and uh, I look to give context for this. All right, this is probably the the worst I have ever felt uh, uh, during an audience interaction. And one time I made a girl cry accidentally. Okay, and I feel worse than that. Uh, one time I looked at a a, a person, a group of two girls at my show and I said oh did some crowd work oh what do you do blah blah went great and then I looked at the other person and I said and and is this your mum and she went what I said well that's your mum and she said no that's my friend okay now I felt really bad about that but let me tell you I didn't feel as bad as I did show 17 at the Melbourne Comedy Festival oh this one was brutal now to give full context to the scenario before you all cancel me, my brother is a tradie, okay? And so he has tradie brain. All right? Now tradies, as I'm sure we are we are all aware, make great houses. They're not going to be at the forefront of uh, a cultural revolution, uh, if you know what I mean. You know, a lot of fuck things get said on site and uh, and sometimes that tradie energy makes it makes its way into your brain and becomes your thoughts. Uh, I was doing doing a show I'm backstage my brother's the tour manager he's doing a great job and uh, I'm obviously filming all of my shows and I have lots of crowd work clips out there so sometimes what's annoying is people will wear stupid outfits or they will come to to, to be made fun of. And it's always weird. It's always inorganic. Uh, I, I ignore these people. I want to talk to real people who, you know, uh, you know what I mean? Like if someone's showing up in a fucking chicken costume, you're getting ignored because that's not funny at all. All right. Oh, what are you wearing? A chicken costume. Cool, bro. Maybe, maybe leave. And come back with normal clothes uh, and a personality. You know what I mean? It's not going to make for a good clip. Would you just fucking come to the show and laugh? That's all. You don't have to dress up as 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 a sex offender thinking that you'll get a good clip out of it. No, there's going to be a guy who actually looks like a sex offender and doesn't realize. That's the clip. All right? Anyway... <laughs> Before the show, my brother warns me, he goes, hey, just so you know, there's a guy here wearing a tutu. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, oh, there's a guy wearing a tutu. And I was like, oh, are they with like a bunch of other boys? He goes, yeah, a few other boys. I'm like, oh, did he must have lost a bet? He goes, I don't know. There's a dude wearing a tutu, right? Now that is how my tradey brain brother described this person to me. That's, I haven't seen them. All I've been told is that there's a guy in a tutu. And I'm like, cool, mental note. I'm going to ignore that person. They've showed up with a stupid outfit. I will ignore them. I'm not going to give it to them, right? And then, anyway, get on stage, 40 minutes into the show. It's going great. It's going brilliant. And then I see uh, this silhouette. Uh, (laughs) You know the one I'm talking about. I see the silhouette, right? Now, it's one thing to see a trans woman in in good lighting with the full... You know, dressed to the nines with the makeup and you may, you may not notice or maybe you do notice but you go, you know what? She's living her best life. Good on her, right? And she looks great. 
But sometimes you will just see the outline and lizard brain goes, oh, obviously that's a man because I know the male outline and I know the female outline. And sometimes you see an outline and that's all. And you go, yep, obviously, right? So I see the outline and then I notice uh, some kind of uh, strange mini skirt tutu-esque thing. And I only see the outline. I cannot see what this person looks like at all. They are going to the bathroom. They go. I don't see which bathroom they enter, obviously. They come back and I say this. Word for word, this is exactly what I said. This is the worst I have ever felt on stage. And I said exactly this. Is that a dude wearing a dress? Silence. The whole room... (laughs) Silence, And not like a little bit of silence waiting for the other person to respond. I'm talking 40 seconds. Oh, fuck. Because the whole crowd can see this person. All I see is the outline. Which, as I've said many times before, is a trans woman's worst enemy. (laughs) Their own outline. I go, is that a dude in a dress? Silence. And I don't even pick up what I've done wrong. They go and sit down. And I go, what? Am I right? Did I get it right? And they haven't said anything. And then I go, oh, what's going on? And then I just hear from the back, I'm transitioning. Oh, fuck. I just like aggressively misgendered someone in front of 120 fucking people. And it's, I only did it because my fucking tradie brain brother said, oh, there's a dude wearing a tutu here. I thought from the outline it was just some guy wearing a stupid outfit and because that's what I was told. And then I fucking, no, I did some crowd work. I'm not going to ruin the bit. It turned out great. And they said I could talk about it and she was lovely. And they were early on in their transition and it was a whole thing. And I felt like it, it, it ended really nicely and lovely. Uh, and they talked to me afterwards and they were totally fine with it. I felt terrible. I apologized. It was all good, right? Totally fine. Put your fucking tweets away, you cunts, all right? Um, Anyway, I meet the trans woman after, and it's like so obviously someone early in their transition trying to be a woman, not a man wearing a stupid outfit. It's like so clearly obviously a trans woman that I go to my brother after the show. I go, dude, why did you tell me that was a dude in a tutu? And he goes, I don't know. And I go, that's clearly a fucking trans person. He goes, yo, well, how am I supposed to know? I don't know, you fucking idiot, by the makeup. How about that? By the, uh, by the amount of effort that they've put into their appearance, it's pretty clear that that is a, a, someone who's transitioning, not a dude on a fucking bucks night, you tradie brain idiot. That is so tradie brain. And I love my brother, and it's a mistake that he made, and he's not a bigoted guy. He just has so much tradie brain in him that he couldn't, comprehend any other reason for a guy who's genetically male to put on a dress other than they lost a bet, you know? And that's that's really, and I think that's actually progress, you know? Because my brother didn't look at this this woman and go, oh, that's, a, that's not a woman, that's a man. He didn't do that. He, he just went, oh, well, the only reason a bloke would put on a dress is if they lost a bet, you know? It's not a bigoted thing he did. It's an incredibly ignorant thing that he did. And I think that's actually better, you know? Because if he he saw the obvious trans woman, recognised that it was someone trying to, you know, transition to female and went, oh, no, that's still a man, that would be an issue. But he just saw it and it, not sorry, whoops, her, and... When I'm trying, I'm trying my best. He just saw it and fuck. He just, I'm talking about the outfit. This is the problem with pronouns and shit is sometimes you will address a person with it. Like, oh, Lewis is wearing a bag. It looked bad. If I said that about me, a man, that's fine. But if I say that about a trans person, Everyone goes, hang on, was that it directed at the outfit or the person? And then I'm done. I'm talking about the outfit. Arthur saw it, the outfit, and goes, oh, the only reason a man would wear a dress is if they lost a bet. Ha <laughs> ha, boys having a good night. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Which is better than, uh, 
This man is trying to be a woman. I will let them know that they are still a man and always will be. Right? That's progress. It's still a little bit, oh, 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 boys, 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 but it's not bigoted, and that's progress. So anyway, that was the first time I misgendered someone. <laughs> the other two times were mistakes. The, 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 one, the one that was not as the, the least bad one was uh, there was a, there was a person and I was talking I was talking to them and I said, uh, oh this is your daughter and then the father said, no, this is my child and I said, oh, yeah, obviously that's what a daughter is and he goes, no, they're non-binary and I thought, oh okay, right and they were young. Right, and I'm definitely going to fuck this one up because I'm not used to the non-binary thing. No gender. Fuck, that's new, isn't it? Which one are you? We just got out. We just started to figure out men can be women and women can be men. And then this third fucking gender comes on and goes, you know what? I don't want to be any of them. And you're like, oh, fuck, fine, but give me a minute, you know? I think that should be the slogan for social justice. Fine, but give me a minute. You know, let me figure it out. I've just got over this. Let me figure that out. I sound like such a fucking boomer. Oh, the, the next thing they want is, is, is they're going to leg, they're going to legalize having sex with children and dogs. Is that what they want? No, Ethel. Get COVID, bitch. Anyway, so I'm I'm talking to this person who is, who will who will not be gendered at all. Watch me nail this shit. I'm talking to this. Can we call them it? At least, you know, because because it, it is very gender neutral. It's okay. Maybe it's very dehumanizing, but it, but it is also gender neutral. And you know what? It's a gender neutral slur, so I'll avoid it. But it's more progressive than misgendering. You know, it's still bad. But it's, I'm, you know, give me a minute. So I'm talking to this person who has no gender uh, and, and, their, and their father. And I go, oh, is this your daughter? And he goes, no, this is my child. And I said, yeah, that's what a daughter is. He goes, no, they're non-binary. And I went, oh, okay, cool. And then it, that got me thinking. That was all fine and they were lovely. Um, he was lovely and so were they. Uh, and it got me thinking that uh, the non-binary term for 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 uh, spawn is very limiting because they were young, so dad could still say child. But when when they become an adult, like it sounds real clunky to go, oh, that's my adult. That sounds almost like some weird BDSM relationship. I think there needs to be because because daughter and son work from infant to old that's timeless child is is age based i think there needs to be a term that a parent can call their child when they're an adult when they're non binary cuz you don't go that's my adult that sounds weird and that could be a girlfriend that could be a boyfriend it could be a mate it could be you know you could be a slave owner what we really need is a is a non binary term for parents to call their adult Babe, children. See, there's no word for it. It needs to be invented. So anyway, that was the second time I misgendered someone on my show. How Melbourne is this? And uh, dude, I was really acting like a Perth comedian, just fucking screaming at Melburnians, calling them the wrong gender. <laughs> That's really Perth, isn't it? Oh, is that a dude in a dress? Oh, is this your daughter? <laughs> How Perth. Anyway, I'm trying my best. I, all I see is silhouettes, all right, guys? Wasn't doing it on purpose. And all these people, by the way, were lovely after the show. The third time, I'm talking to, if you're looking at a silhouette, a woman, and the voice, right? All I have is a voice and a silhouette, okay? And that is often a trans person's two worst enemies, is the silhouette and the voice, you know, Silhouette is the big boss. The voice is like, you know, the mini boss beforehand. Like you think the voice is the, is the big boss, but then you defeat it. And then, and then you're like, oh, fuck, that was easy. Was that the end of the game? And then all of a sudden the sun comes out and then you see your shadow and you're like, fuck, that's the final boss, you know? 
Like who who has a good silhouette? Who's that who's that fucking uh uh that Blair White chick? Good silhouette, you know? Couldn't if I was looking purely at shadows, Blair White w- female. Caitlyn Jenner bit of an issue, you know? See, Caitlyn Jenner, I will look at them in in person and photos and I'll go trans woman. If I can only see their shadow, I'm going to get in trouble. And don't tell me I'm wrong because you haven't seen her shadow. Third time, I talk to what I perceive to be a woman and then they yell out, Oh, you've misgendered me. And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, you're obviously you're non-binary. And they go, no. I went, fuck, I tried. Because I'm a man. I was like, okay, great. And then the then they her, his fuck, his husband, I'm trying. His husband yells out, You misgendered my husband. And that got me thinking, like, did that relationship start before transition? Because it seemed early on. And then does that make the guy gay? I guess it does. They both had to transition. And how Melbourne is that? And that's beautiful. That's the power of love, guys. You know? And that's and that's that's not all of my show. However, three misgenderings in a row, pretty good. Now, I'm not saying that I misgendered 100% of trans people. There were absolutely more than that because it is Melbourne and I nailed most of them. Well, I didn't fuck any of them, but I got the genders correct. And that's the point, guys. Look, I'm only talking about this now, so I don't get cancelled. I'll cancel myself, you know? I've had, I've, uh, I've, I've, Melbourne was awesome. Thank you to everyone who came. And also, by the way, we are going everywhere in Australia. If you want to know when I'm going to be in your city, check out lewspears.com slash gig list, G I G list. Uh, and if you're outside Australia, check that out, put your city in and you will get an email when I'm on the way. And that's also kind of how I decide where I'm going to tour next. If there's enough people in, uh, on the gig list from one particular city, I'll go, cool. That's enough interest. We'll go there. So if you want me to come to your city, even if it's a small town or international, National, sign up to the gig list, put your city in, put your country in, and uh, if there are enough people who you do it, I will be on the way. All right? So that's how I do it. What was I saying? What did I want to talk about here? What do I have? Oh, yeah. So comedy, right, during the festival was going great. Obviously, the Prince Philip thing happened. That was amazing. Sold out my whole final weekend. I mean, the cunt could have died at the start of my run. Bit selfish, don't you think? You know? Could have died. Could have died when I had twenty three shows instead of six. Come on, Phil. Were you, were, were you really were you really enjoying those last few those last three weeks? Bit selfish, if you ask me. Anyway, so that happened and that was great. Thank you to everyone who shared it and thank you to the Daily Mail for doing my bidding. I really do appreciate you guys being manipulated by me every time I need to sell a few tickets. Um, that's cool and that's great and uh, comedy's going great. And dude, I've never had a video go that well before ever. Not even the vaccine video. I've never had, I've never dropped something and it hit a million in 10 days. That's like, even for videos where I have multi-million views, that's never happened. Usually it'll get like half a million maybe in the first week or 10 days and then it will over months or even years creep up to past one or two million. I've never released something and then had it hit like that fast across you know all levels of society it seemed like young people in Australia old people in Australia uh people across the UK and the fucking world and then the news as well I've never gone like internet viral and mainstream viral at the same time it's been crazy uh so thank you very much to people who shared it and put it on their Instagram stories and all that kind of stuff and it's really really cool got you know a million views and I was like man this is crazy uh I thought I thought fuck dude I'm going to be on on uh, on Conan I'm going to be on Rogan I'm going to get everywhere and then uh I f- I finished my break and I was like man I'm a I I got a million views on a stand up clip on YouTube you know it got like a, over a million on TikTok but I have a few of those a million on TikTok is like 100 views on Facebook you know everyone has a million views on TikTok right the fucking local cashier at your Woolies has a million views on TikTok every single person seems to have gone viral on TikTok I think there are more viral videos than people on the fucking platform every fucking video is viral on TikTok it's crazy i don't know how they count those views it's like the camera is looking for you and, and, and they count all the bacteria 
on every 15 year old's greasy face and they go that's a view that's a few billion right so anyway uh I, I'm gone viral everywhere in the news, everything. Mum's friends are messaging her. When mum's friends message her, I'm like, fuck, this is big. Because that never happens. So that happened and I'm like, man, I'm a whole new comedian. I reckon I'm at a new level. I'm on a new level. I'm on a new level. You know, that was playing in my head. I would walk in rooms. I went, I went on a holiday to Bright, walked in a bakery. Everyone close to death, retired old cunts. None of them know who I am. I kick down the door and they go, and they go, Whoa, what type of pie would you like? And I go, I'm on a new level. Picked up the cream pie, threw it in her face. And I, got, and I got away with it. The cops showed up and they were like, oh, no, that's Prince Philip guy. Let him be. I thought I was on an elevated new level. And then I took my break and then I came back, whole new comedian, famous. The famous Lewis Spears, the guy that made fun of Prince Philip and then he died. Shut up, Discord. Sorry. I thought that was happening. And then I go to my first gig back. I do guerrilla comedy, which is, which is a, a, a it's, which is a hole. It's it, that's, and that's, this is really what stand up comedy is being a professional stand up comedian in Australia. It's incredible highs and an incredible minority of the time. And then, and then real big lows and I'm on my high. And then I book my first thing back. I'm headlining. I'm like, I'm a fucking headliner, dude. I'm a headliner. I'm famous. The room's going to be packed. They're all going to be there for me. In fairness, half the people were there for me. That's really cool. That's never happened to me before. I get on stage. It's a, it's a tiny little basement. I go from selling thousands of tickets in Melbourne to about 40 people in a fucking shisha bar in a basement where they're playing hard style upstairs and they won't turn it down for the comedy. You can hear it the whole time. There's no sound system. There's just a microphone and an amp that somebody got from a guitar store and they don't know how it works because it has reverb and no one knows how to turn it off. I'm echoing. I'm in a fucking 40 person dungeon. It sounds like I'm in a cave, right? I'm going to go spelunking. Elon Musk is going to call me a pedophile because <laughs> I'm in a fucking cave, right? So I go in and I'm, 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 think, I'm thinking, I'm on such a high, you understand? Like I just did 23, I sold, I, I broke records, personal records for tickets sold. I'm, I'm, I'm think that I'm killing it. And then I, 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 the first gig back, I'm in a dungeon. There's a shisha bar. It smells, smells like fucking vanilla. Uh, and, and, and Arab dudes who don't like white guys and there's hard style playing. I go downstairs and, and there's this woman who's like 55 in a beautiful blue dress and heels, more drunk than I've ever seen a woman that age with a black eye, clearly lost, stumbles down into the room just before my set, just before my set right? There's a, there's another guy that I've met at previous gigs and I have a good relationship with him. He's, he's disabled. He can't speak, but he does like to heckle, which is just a problem. He's got a little typing machine, but he doesn't use it to heckle. He just goes, and he can't speak. And I love the guy, but dear God, how the fuck am I supposed to respond to a heckler when I can't understand him and they're disabled? Every time I say something funny, the whole crowd reacts like it's a hate crime. (laughs) But anyway, that's going on and I'm and and I'm doing look, I get on stage and half the crowd's super excited because they recognize me. Oh my god, that's the that's the fucking Prince Philip guy. And then this woman in the blue dress who was so drunk, like she doesn't know where the fuck she is. She was so drunk that another guy who was clearly on ice, 20 years old, was trying to hand her off to other groups of people because he was worried about her and wanted to get her home safe. And he said, I'm sorry, I've had heaps of drugs. I can't help her, but someone has to. And she can't even speak. You know when women get drunk, so drunk that they just become silent, you know? Like men, when they get really drunk, they kind of become violent or, or, or they cry. Women almost 100% of the time just become really silent. Like they'll, get, they'll have a noisy period early on in the night. They'll have a crying period halfway through the night, but you get enough vodka cruises in them and they just become mute. 
And, and all they can do is kind of do a happy drunk smile and stumble around. She was at that phase, just stumbling around in a beautiful blue dress, her black eye uh, and, and silence, right? And then she sits in the front fucking row on a beanbag. So she's like, it's, you know, it's, she's one fortieth of the audience, which is a big portion of the audience. I get up. And I start talking and I start crushing. I start doing really well. People know who I am. I, I talk about the Prince Philip bit. I'm not going to ruin it. I got some new gear about it. Uh, and then uh, uh, the, the guy who, who can't speak heckles, uh, which is an awkward spot for me, but I know the guy. So I throw something back at him and then everyone laughs. But the blue woman just doesn't really comprehend anything that I've said. All she sees is me yelling at a guy who's disabled and she starts screaming at me really angry and starts hugging him. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. And then she starts screaming and yelling at me. And I'm like, oh, look out. My grandma's here. She's had a bit too much to drink. I'm doing the best that I can. Anyway, then she starts having a coughing fit. I'm trying to perform jokes over the top of this woman who's yelling at me, pissed out of her brain and having an asthma attack at the same time. Someone runs over with an inhaler. Another woman is trying to calm her down. A female comedian I hadn't met, didn't realize she was a comic at the time. She's trying to calm her down so she doesn't ruin my set. Half the crowd is laughing. Half the crowd is concerned this woman's going to die. I'm ignoring her because if she dies, it'll be a good story for the podcast. And I'm trying to do that. <coughs> I'm doing well despite the circumstances. Uh, anyway, then someone brings over a fucking bucket for her to vomit into because she thinks, well, she's either having a coughing fit or she's going to spew. She's that drunk, no one can tell. Someone brings over a bucket. I'm yelling about the scenario going, oh, you know, I thought I was going to be on Conan and now I have some woman in here spewing into a bucket in front of me. Where did you even get the bucket? It's small. It's the fucking tip jar for the comedians. She's spewing into the money that people have donated to come and see the comedy. I thought, oh, fuck, I start yelling about that. People are dying, laughing. Then she throws it at me. She throws the fucking bucket at me. And I have this moment, just like when I stubbed my toe, where I found out who I was, because everything in my brain was like, get the bucket, pour it on her head, and then remove her teeth. But I took a deep breath in, and I exhaled out, and I made a joke instead. And then I fantasized about doing that all the way home. And that is the highs and lows of comedy, guys. Sometimes you'll be the most famous comedian on the internet for a day, and then the next day you'll be performing in a basement to uh, strangers uh, while they smoke shisha, play hardstyle, and, and a woman throws vomit at you while a disabled guy who can't speak heckles you despite the fact that he, neither of us know what he's saying. You know? That's the highs and lows of comedy. So to that guy who stopped supporting me on Patreon because I got AirPods, how about that? I'm not doing that well, am I? If I was doing that well, I wouldn't have vomit thrown at me in a fucking basement by someone's mum. And, and that's, that's when, when people go, oh man, I, I really want to start comedy. It looks so amazing in your videos. I go, well, that's not what it is. That's not always what it is. Sometimes women throw vomit at you. And and that's and that's been my week, guys. It's been it's been a great week. It's been an incredible week. And uh, and and look, I would uh, I'm I'm going to say here if you want to, if you do want to support me on Patreon, uh, the podcast is going to be coming back. We've uh, kind of streamlined the process. Keelan is now helping me do the podcast. At, at before it was just me left up to my own devices. I did everything. I recorded them. I posted them. I fucking did everything. And, and, and when I do everything, I do nothing. I either do it or it doesn't get done for a month. So now Keelan is, is taking charge of Spearhead Sundays. Uh, he's going to be the one posting. He's sitting here making me record this. He's got a gun pointed at my head. What he doesn't know is if he pulls the trigger, it's going to shoot backwards and he'll die. So that's a little trap I've laid for him, just so you know, mate. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it is, it is going to be done done and I'm sorry that it uh, has taken you know this long but we are trying to figure it out uh, Luke and Lewis has been going so well because Luke and I are not allowed to post 
the the podcast or do the thing. So that's what I'm doing with with my Spearhead Sundays podcast. It's going to go great because I'm not I'm not going to like here's the thing. It's not my podcast anymore. I'm on it. I'm the host, I'm the face, I'm the name, but I'm really more of an ambassador of the podcast. It's really Keelan's now. So if you're unhappy about the release schedule, if you have a complaint about the episode, don't direct it at me. Send a letter to Keelan. I'll include his full address in the description below. <laughs> Uh, and uh, if you want to support me on Patreon, you get an extra half hour of the podcast every single week. I, I end this and then I just continue on for Patreon. They get an extra long version and they get it early access to the Discord, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so please do support me. I would really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, and now it's time for the worst part of the podcast, uh, which we all know and hate uh, as the miscellaneous bit at the end of the podcast. Now, this is the part of the podcast where I answer questions sent in by the you, the loyal listener. If you would like me to answer a question, if you need some life advice, if you have a story you would like told on the podcast that you think I would enjoy, please send it to podcast at loosebeers.com. Uh, now, we have uh, this lovely uh what do we have here? I want it. Where's where's the where's the one where the guy fucked up? Okay, here we go. <clears throat> this one is titled "I fucked up." Please summarize it better than this man. I almost didn't open this one. <clears throat> hey, Lewis, I need some help on how to move on from my fuck up. Earlier this month, I went to an 18th birthday party with my best friend's girlfriend, and long story short, we hooked up. Oh, hooked up with his best friend's girlfriend. That is a dog move, my friend. Here's the thing. My best friend, let's her name is Amber. Oh her. Oh, your best friend's gay and you took her girlfriend. Come on, dude. That was probably the only fucking gay bitch she could find. When you're like 17, 18, there's only one or two other gay people in your vicinity. You, they, she's not on grinder. And women have it worse than men because gay dudes are like looking and hunting. Gay women seem to be like a, a where's Wally book. Like where's, where's a lesbian, you know? There's, there's every single fucking chick on the planet now is bisexual. None of them are dating each other. They seem very difficult to find. Don't do that, dude. Here's the thing. My best friend's name is Amber. I've known her since primary school and I've known her for about eight-ish years. So I thought that our relationship is solid. Well, I guess not if you're stabbing her in the back and hooking up with her girlfriend, dude. That's a bit rough. Amber actually introduced me to her girlfriend called Holly. Oh, no. Come on, bro. And we got on really well. But here's the thing, Holly has a lot of mental shit wrong with her and that's not me having a dig at her. Well, yes it is because you're saying <laughs> oh, she's got a lot of mental shit wrong with her so it's probably her fault, you know what I mean? It's not me having a dig at her, I'm just saying that her mood and personality is never constant. It's never the same, if you know what I mean, without sounding like a complete cunt. Yeah, look bro, you're really coming across as a cunt here. You can't like hook up with your best friend's girlfriend and go, yeah, but in my defense, her girlfriend's got depression. <laughs> look, I look, I may have I may have ruined my best friend's relationship, but in my defense, his girlfriend is suicidal. So so what, dude? Don't fucking hook up with your dude, you're in the wrong here, man. I don't know I don't know how to spin it. Um I genuinely respected Holly for who she is. I was never like, "Ooh, it's you or some year eight bullshit." Well, obviously you respected her cuz you're fucking her. So I kept my distance and I told Amber that, hey, look after yourself. I don't want you to get hurt by Holly. What do you, I mean, by you also? Uh, it's, it's a, look, I understand that she has some blame to take, but at the end of the day, you made the decision. I think when it comes to cheating, if you did not know the person's partner, there's no guilt unless you knew they were in a relationship. Then there's some guilt. But if you know they're in a relationship and you know the person very well, you are a very bad person because it's not 100%. It takes two, right? And if you had no idea that they, if you thought they were single and they were cheating, then you're completely absolved. If you knew they were cheating, you have some guilt. If you knew they were cheating and you knew the person intimately well who was their partner you're in trouble um 
I kept my distance and I told Amber, hey, look after yourself. I don't want you to get hurt by Holly. And it's not the type of thing where Holly would do that on purpose. But as I said, it's a bit weird and got messy. So did, did, does she know that you fucked her girlfriend or no? Now, knowing that I said all of... Now, knowing that I said all that, because I genuinely care about Amber, your best friend, because she's like a brother to me. I mean, your sister, but yeah. How do you think... How do you think she feels that I fucked her girl? Quite literally a backstab and I feel bad. Granted, we were both drunk, but that's not an excuse. And after it happened, I called her and told her. Okay, so she knows. I called her and told her, said that I fucked up. uh, And we met up and well, she doesn't want anything to do with me, which is fair. I can't blame her. I've unfollowed her and shit on all social media, but she said if I'm ever in danger, like on my deathbed, I'm able to call her. So I still have a number, which gives me some hope, I guess. I blocked her girlfriend on social media. I knew she was dangerous. Don't, don't, no, accept responsibility, bro. Don't, oh, don't, what did she do? She, if, did she hold you down and rape you? It doesn't sound like it. Oh, I knew she was dangerous with her great titties and fat pussy. Don't, come on, bro. I guess because she can hurt someone like she did to me. I, okay, look, this is a cop out, man. Don't say that she hurt you. You both hurt Amber. Not saying that the sex hurt, but as I said, her mental health stuff. Yeah, dude. The funny thing is, after a month before this stuff happened, I bought Amber a ticket for your comedy show so we can go together on the 9th of April. My shout. I think she will still go because I love... I think I will still go because I love your stuff. Oh, this is an old email from before festival. But I guess I want your thoughts on how to move on from a friend that genuinely meant so so much to me. Cheers. I love your stuff and I haven't missed a podcast all year. I have. (laughs) I've missed heaps. Um, Look, uh, you look, here's what I think. You fucked up. So obviously so did her girlfriend, but you both fucked up. Uh, And my advice is the first, firstly, the, there's no repairing that relationship. That's fucked. Your friendship is fucked. Uh, And that's, that's, that is what it is. You, fucked it and it it will be irreparably changed and especially if she's gay and you're straight it's gonna be an issue that would stick around your entire friendship it's fucked uh unless she she's the best person in the world and can find it in her heart to forgive you it's fucked so my advice for you coming to terms with 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 uh the friendship dying is uh The first step is accepting that you had a big part. Don't just blame the other girl. Be like, oh, she was crazy. She was, you need to accept. If, if all you have is, oh, the other girl was crazy. She ruined my friendship with this, with Amber. You'll never get over it because you know, you fucked up and you know, in your heart and your soul, you shouldn't have done it. Yes. You were drunk. What? Yes. She also partook in it, but you both share equal blame. Uh, and that would be my advice to you is the first step to getting over it is to acknowledging what happened. And what happened was you fucked up. Um, and that's my advice to you, bro, uh, is, is, and time heals all wounds. And yeah, she was a good friend. Uh, but also, you know, it's not like it's a, it's a parent or, or, a, or a girlfriend. It's a, it is just a friendship. And, and as, as you grow, you friendships do change and evolve and maybe it was always going to happen. Uh, so that's my advice is I would say that you fucked up. I wouldn't reach out to her and apologize again. It seems like you did the right thing in terms of, you know, you let her know and you apologized and you did that and, and you respected her terms of, of cutting contact with obviously her girlfriend, but also her. So I think you've done the right thing by her there uh, after f- you know, doing the wrong thing. So that's good. And I would just respect that boundary. Don't reach out to her, uh, you know, six months later, go, oh, could we still be, you fucked it. It's up to her to reach out if she wants to. And to be honest, unless she's mother Teresa, I don't think she would want to. So that's, look, come to terms with it, bro. You fucked up. Uh, find some friends that, uh, you know, find some gay friends, some gay male friends. Maybe you won't fuck their partners. All right. That's my advice. Sorry, you fucked up. Got to accept your consequences, bro. All right, that's the end of the podcast. Thank you very much for listening. If you would like more podcasts, I'm going to continue on on Patreon. So stay tuned for that. 
Uh, the Speared Sundays is back. It's going to be coming out every single Sunday. Uh, Keelan's going to make sure of it, and so will I. It is not all on him. It is on me. Uh, but, uh, you know, the festival was crazy, and uh, we moved into Luke and Lewis and a whole bunch of stuff. I'm sure you understand. Um, the main thing is I didn't stop the YouTube content. That's going great. So thank you very much to everyone who came out to the shows. I am going to be touring Australia in August and September. That's when we're doing the dates. Those shows will go on sale in the next few weeks. So loosebeers.com slash gig list to get an email. You also get on the pre-sale list. And if you would like to continue on listening, check out the Patreon, Google Lewis Spears Patreon. There's a bunch of other unreleased episodes on there as well. And it's a Discord group. And I will continue the podcast there. Until then, have a shit one. uh, And I'll see you over on Patreon. Goodbye.